Hi everyone, welcome to the History of Football channel. Tonight I'm going to be doing a video that I've wanted to do for a while now, and that is a story about a team which existed a long time ago, which people out there might know of, or might never have heard of this club before, and I thought I'd just do a bit of a story about them, talk about their time as a football club when they existed, and I'll be getting into that very shortly. But I'd just like to see before I start the video that uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's recently subscribed to the channel and have watched that Highfield Road video which hit 20,000 uh, views. I'm overwhelmed by that and thanks to everyone that watched. And the club I'm going to be talking about tonight and doing a story about is Blackburn Olympic Football Club. Some people might go, Blackburn Olympic, there's only one club in Blackburn and that's Blackburn Rovers. But in the early days of football, there were a club called Blackburn Olympic Football Club. And obviously when football started in the 1860s in England, in the south of the country, it was played by the upper classes. And from you had clubs like Old Etonians, people like that from the universities. But football made its way up to the northern towns in the northern part of England. And in the 1870s, Blackburn Rovers, when they were founded, were the major club of Blackburn. But there was lots of clubs in Blackburn and Blackburn Olympic Football Club was founded in February 1878 when two of the uh, other clubs that played in Blackburn, Black Star Football Club and James Street, opted to merge. The name of Blackburn Olympic Football Club was chosen by James Edmondson, the club's first treasurer, and it's believed to have been inspired by a recent excavation of the Olympia site, site of the ancient Olympic Games. Blackburn Olympics' first ever match was a friendly, played on the 9th of February 1878, where they beat St John's, which was another team from Blackburn, two goals to nil. In April 1878, the club entered its first ever competition, the Livesley United Cup. Olympic beat St Mark's in the final to win the tournament, and as the competition was not held again, the club retained the trophy in perpetuity. Over the next two seasons, the club continued to play friendly matches and also entered the Blackburn Association Challenge Cup, a knockout tournament open to all local sides. In 1879 and 1880, Blackburn Olympic won that cup and after the competition was discontinued, when the Blackburn Association was absorbed in the, the larger Lancashire County Football Association, Blackburn Olympic also kept that trophy in perpetuity. In 1880, the club's committee decided that Blackburn Olympic should compete for greater prizes and opted to enter two further competitions, the Lancashire Senior Cup and the Football Association Challenge Cup, also known as the FA Cup. In the club's first ever FA Cup match, they were defeated five goals to four by Sheffield Football Club. The following year, the club's reputation within its home area was growing and matches were now being arranged with teams from further afield, such as Sheffield Wednesday, also known back then as The Wednesday, Nottingham Forest, and even Scottish clubs such as Hibernian played against Blackburn Olympic. The club's increasing expenses were met with the help of Sydney Yates, a local iron foundry owner who invested a large amount of money and continued to bankroll the club for most of their existence. At the end of the 1881-82 season, Blackburn Olympic defeated arch-rivals Blackburn Rovers to win the East Lancashire Charity Cup. In the 1882-1883 season, Blackburn Olympic reached the FA Cup final. They defeated five clubs on the way to the final and their opponents were Old Etonians who were the reigning FA Cup champions. They defeated Blackburn Rovers the year before to lift the trophy and the match was played at Kennington Oval, also known now as the Oval in London. In the final, all the Tonians took the lead when Harry Goodhart scored during the first half. However, Arthur Matthews equalised for Blackburn Olympic in the second half. Soon afterwards, Arthur Dunn was injured and forced to leave the field, reducing all the Tonians to 10 men for the rest of the match. The scores remained level at the end of regulation 90 minutes. Under regulations of the FA Cup, 30 minutes of extra time could be played in the event of a draw. At the referee's discretion and in response to the fervent mood of the crowd, the captains asked to play on to try to secure a result. During the extra period, Blackburn Olympic scored a goal through 
Jimmy Costley when he scored from a John Yates cross and it went past all the Tonians goalkeeper John Rawlison. Upon Blackburn Olympics return to Blackburn with the FA Cup trophy, there was a celebration parade and a civic reception was received. Blackburn Olympics captain Albert Warburton proclaimed, The Cup is very welcome to Lancashire. It will have a good home and it will never go back to London. Olympic were the first team from a working class background to win the FA Cup. Following Blackburn Olympics winning the FA Cup, the clubs in the south of England were not particularly happy with Blackburn winning the competition, which provoked a response from clubs suggesting that the FA investigate the finances of northern clubs. They focused in particular to Blackburn Olympics training excursion to Blackpool in the week leading up to the FA Cup, suggesting that the players would not have been able to take so much time off to work uh, from work unless the club was paying them some form of a wage. Questions were also asked about players who had relocated from one town to another, seemingly for the sole purpose of playing for a new football team. Ultimately, no action was taken against Olympic, although punishments were imposed on other clubs, including Preston Northend, who were expelled from the FA Cup. This in turn prompted the Northern clubs to take plans to break away from the FA and form a rival governing body which would not impose the so-called Amateur Isle deal on clubs from the north. The following year, Blackburn Olympic's defence of the FA Cup fell at the semi-final stage when they were beaten by Scottish side Queen's Park, who in turn were beaten by Blackburn Rovers in the FA Cup final. Olympic lost in the second round to their rivals Blackburn Rovers the following year, who went on to cement their position as the town's leading football team by winning the competition for the second consecutive season. The threat of a schism within the sport was averted in 1885 when the FA agreed to legalise professionalism. In a town the size of Blackburn, however, however, Olympic found it hard to compete for spectators and sponsors with the longer established and more successful Blackburn Rovers. In 1886, the club's committee was forced to reduce the players' wages to a quarter of what was being offered by Preston Northend. Many of the team's key players walked out in response and were quickly signed by wealthier clubs. When the Football League was founded in 1888, Blackburn Olympic was one of the clubs that were not invited to form the new competition. They instead decided to join another competition which was formed by other clubs that were not invited into the Football League. This competition was called the Combination. But this poorly organised competition, which attracted only small crowds, collapsed before the end of the 1888-1889 season. Beset by heavy debts, the club's committee announced in early 1889 that all professional players were being released from their contracts with immediate effect and henceforth the club would only employ amateur players. This desperate measure came too late to save the club, which closed down in September 1889. Blackburn Olympics' last ever match was an away defeat to Everton at Anfield. With Blackburn Olympic, they had two or three home grounds before they settled on the ground that would be their home from 1879 to the end of their existence. And... Yes, their home ground was called the Hole in the Wall and it was named after the pub which was situated across the road from the ground and it was a, a pub up until about 2015 I believe until it unfortunately closed. There is a picture in the video if you didn't already notice. Uh, the site of the Hole in the Wall ground had previously been used by another club called Queen's Own but that club left and a lot of their players defected to Blackburn Rovers which left that bit of land vacant. Blackburn Olympic moved into there and they continued to call that ground over the next nearly 10 years the hole in the wall ground. The hole in the wall ground held around about 10,000 from records that I have read. Um, most of the Crowds that attended Blackburn Olympic matches were between one to 2,000 spectators. The highest ever recorded crowd at the Hole in the Wall ground was in November 1884 when Preston North End were the visitors and 10,000 people attended that match. After the club's demise, the pitch was taken over by Blackburn Railway Clerks Club 
and is now the site of St Mary's College in Blackburn. In the first two years of their existence, Blackburn Olympic did not have a kit per se. All the players wore different coloured kits because obviously back then they were an amateur game. But when the club entered in 1880 to the FA Cup for the first time, that's when the FA imposed on all the players and said, look, you have to wear a matching uniform. So Blackburn Olympic chose the colours of a light blue shirt with white shorts. And on occasion, if they were playing someone that had a similar colour, they would wear dark blue shirts with white shorts. Now obviously Blackburn Olympic's chief rivalry was with Blackburn Rovers. The first match between the two clubs was a game in February 1879, which resulted in a 3-1 win for Blackburn Olympic. The clubs played each other 40 times, but Olympic only won six of these matches. The rivalry between the two clubs became very fierce in September 1884, when amid accusations that the club were using underhand tactics in attempts to poach each other's star players, Blackburn Rovers secretary sent a telegram to the opposition number, stating that his club would play no matches against Blackburn Olympic in the 1884-1885 season. In December, however, the clubs were drawn each other against, against each other in the FA Cup, and matches between the clubs resumed after that. Blackburn Olympic's final ever meeting against Blackburn Rovers was in February 1889. Blackburn Rovers won the match six goals to one. It were a benefit match to raise funds for Blackburn Olympic, who were doing it very tough. Blackburn and Rovers actually agreed that all the gate receipts and all the money that was earned from the from this match would go straight to Blackburn Olympic. They said that you can have all the money, we don't want it. So in the final ever match that they played against each other, even though they were bitter rivals, Blackburn Rovers were willing to help out Blackburn Olympic. Blackburn Olympic's most famous player, you could say, was John Hunter. And he was part of the FA Cup winning team in 1883. He also played for Sheffield Football Club and he represented England in seven appearances between 1878 to 1882. So that's my story on Blackburn Olympic Football Club. Um, a very interesting club, very successful in their short little history that they had. The only competition that the club entered and did not win was the Lancashire Senior Cup. They won every other competition that they ever competed in. I've always been fascinated with this team because I remember when I saw that their ground was called the Hole in the Wall, I went, that's a, that's such a strange name for, for, a, for a ground. And then ever since then, I, I read about them. And now that I do YouTube, I thought I'd do a video on them. And um, Unfortunately, they're forgotten by pretty much everyone. But hopefully this video can... Um, educate some people on some of the clubs that built the game and were there at the start and i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you um like this type of stuff and if you do let me know in the comment section below and uh, thanks again for the support that everyone showed me over the last couple of months with the views it's been crackers so anyway this has been history of football if you haven't already done so go and check out the video that i did yesterday which was the Best ever Paris Saint-Germain team from 1970 up until when the Qataris took over the club. They had some very good players before the Qataris took over and I compiled a, a team of who I thought was the, the, their best players from 1970 up until the takeover. And um, thanks everyone once again for watching the videos, it means a lot. We're getting close to that 1,000 subscriber mark. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll be doing some videos very, very shortly, so stay tuned. This has been History of Football, and I'll catch us all later in the next one. Tatty bye for now.